Trev's Hockey Show. I'm the Trev. It's too sweet. Anyway, well, we knew this video was coming. I think the important question that had to be answered was when. And, I mean, I honestly thought All-Star break. But if you'd watched the Vancouver-Edmonton game on Saturday night... You essentially saw the same thing everybody else saw. The writing was clear as day written on the wall. So, for the second time in just over a year, the worst kept secret since at least November was finally let out of the bag. And Vancouver has made a coaching change. The first coaching change during this season. I'm not counting the 12 before the season began. I'm talking during the season in actual play. And Bruce Boudreau is out of Vancouver. Let's talk about it. So, yeah, we were here on December 6th, 2021, when Boudreau was brought in after the release of Travis Green, links above you. And so for the remainder of the 21-22 season, the Canucks finished respectably, like 32, 15, and 10 respectably. And though they didn't quite make the playoffs, they were two points shy. So obviously the expectation is that the Canucks will improve on that under Boudreau, right? Right? Well, I guess when you start the season in your first seven games with an 0-5-2 record, which included being the first team in league history to have four multi-goal games blown consecutively to start the season. That's probably not the best start, right? But the Canucks have managed only an 18, 25, and 3 record, which includes losing 10 of their last 12 games. And as I'm recording this, sees themselves 14 points out of a wildcard spot. Now, I'm just going to say, if you follow the same 10-point logic that I follow... Which essentially means if you find yourself 10 points out of the wildcard spot, you're pretty much done. Being 14 points out essentially means, yeah, they're done. But that's a foregone conclusion, I think, at this point. Now for Boudreaux, the talk of being released from his coaching duties came as soon as November. And it was really only intensified in the last three weeks with upper management even holding a press conference not long ago, actually, where they would go as far as to say that they were going to stick with Boudreaux, despite also saying that they were talking to other candidates for the job. So, yeah, definitely left the rope dangling there, to the point where Boudreaux was even questioned, well, I'm not fired yet, but why am I still here if you've already got your replacement in the wings, right? So, as of today, because it is still Sunday, Boudreaux adds a 50, 40, and 13 record in 103 games with the Vancouver Canucks to his totals with Washington, Anaheim, and Minnesota, which now end at 1,087 games, which will equal 617 wins, 342 losses, and 128 overtime slash shootout points. And with no trips to the playoffs in Vancouver, his playoff record remains intact at 43 and 47 in 90 games. Now as for his replacement, which from what I can tell is not in term, it's not temporary, it's full-time for at least two years, is Rick Tockett. Now, Tockett hasn't coached since his time in Arizona ended after the 2021 season, but he does come with a 178 win, 200 loss, and 60 overtime slash shootout point record in 438 games coached between Tampa Bay and Arizona. And what should be of note here is his 4-5 and five playoff record. In his 6-plus seasons coaching, he only has a 4-5 and five playoff record, which only became a thing thanks to the 1920 season and what that brought. But what he does bring is three Stanley Cups, two as an assistant coach in 2016 and 17, when the Penguins went back-to-back, -back, as well as one as a player, which he won in 92, again with the Penguins. So wouldn't you know it? Another Rutherford guy. Now Tockett takes over a team that's in complete transition. And one can imagine the Canucks of today 
are not going to look like the same Canucks at the end of the season. Changes are coming, I guarantee it. And it's not to say even that the Canucks are going to tank, but one can think, I mean, 14 points out, and they're not that far from the bottom. Is it worth considering entering the Connor Bedard sweepstakes with a sure shot? <laughs> but that's a different video for a different day, I'm sure. Playoffs are not obviously happening this season, so obviously you got to look to the future, right? Right. But again, change is coming. you got to think Horvat is as, as good as gone as soon as they find a partner. The team essentially looks like they've given up. I mean, what's the shame in finishing any lower in the season than what they can? I mean, they were supposed to be better, especially with JT Miller and all that. But alas, they're not. So definitely some some change, major change has to happen in Vancouver for them to be competitive again. But if the plan is to just drop everything, start from scratch and see what next season happens, then Tockett's in the right situation. But here's my opinion on it. This was just bad. <clears throat> Not bad for Boudreaux. I'm sure if he wanted to, he'll find another NHL job some, somewhere. That... I think is a guarantee. This is bad for Canucks upper management. This is bad for the Canucks as a whole. Like, this is reputation control now. I mean, going into a press conference saying you have full confidence in your coach only to say in the same breath, you got his replacement waiting in the wings, just have to wait for him to be ready. Ugh. Like, yeah, damage control now, or, you know, at least have the reputation of, you know, we'll screw over another coach in Vancouver because that's what we do. And I'm sure there were probably better names out there that they could have reeled in to be head coach because, I mean, I'm not defending Boudreaux. I mean, I've never really been the hugest Boudreaux fan myself, but I don't see how Tockett is any better of a fit. I mean, the guy does not come with a winning record, a playoff record. I mean, sorry, one winning season, but again, that was the 1920 season. The less we say about that, the better. I don't know, that's just my opinion. I mean, it was dirty in the way it was handled. I'm just going to say that much. But, again, Boudreaux becomes the first coach relieved of his duty during the season. I kind of thought there wasn't going to be many, but I didn't think it would be the first one in January. Either way, here we are. First coaching change during the season. And it's been hanging out for at least a couple months. Let me know your thoughts on the coaching change in Vancouver. So another one of those hockey shows. I well, thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you've made it to this point. I know I haven't been in act as active this year as I probably was this time last year, but don't worry. I'm working on things. <laughs> but either way, if you've made it this far, if you're digging what I'm doing, if you just want to say hi, hit that like button. If you really want that red button that says subscribe all over it, you know what to do. You know how to make it feel. And you know what we're going for. Let's get her done. <laughs> Social. It's in the description down below. So moving forward. Well, we're coming up to the All-Star break. I'll give you my thoughts on the season at the All-Star break. I know most people do it at the halfway point. I'm going to be different. I'm going to do it at the All-Star break. But either way, in the meantime, in the meantime, Look for Maria Smitrev. Later.